can we target the multi-drug resistant cancers and eliminate the side effects through small organic molecules? We are at a stage where we have identified a lead compound which is able to overcome multidrug resistance and is able to kill multiple type of cancer cells which include lung cancer, breast cancer and so on. Now we want to optimize the structure and activity of this compound and make it ready for clinical trials. There are two avenues in terms of developing new therapeutics for the cancer research. First is that chemotherapeutics cannot differentiate between the cancer cells and the normal cells. And they not only kill the cancer cells, but also the normal cells. And that leads to severe side effects. The other problem that often the patients develop resistance, so there is a need to find new drugs with novel mechanism of action that can kill even those cancer cells which are resistant to currently available chemotherapeutics. In Pakistan, over 10 million people are infected with hepatitis C. And despite the availability of uh, effective drugs, this disease burden is not getting low. The reason is the virus is developing resistance and there is no vaccine. So our the main focus of research is to develop vaccine against hepatitis C, HIV, coronavirus, dengue virus, along with discovering new drugs by understanding these infections at molecular level. We recently engineered a molecule, a protein, that targets specific features of virus which are common in HIV and hepatitis C. And we tested that molecule. It inhibits the infection of both HIV and HCV. This is highly promising potential drug because it can not only inhibit individual infections, but it can treat co-infections. We named that potential drug as LUMS1 and we have filed a patent for that and uh, this is really a promising treatment for HIV as well as hepatitis C. If there are 170 million people infected with hepatitis C, 40 million are infected with HIV, if we develop a drug that would have a uh, really big economic potential, not only at a global scale, but also at a national and local scale. The only problem is that uh, we are always hesitant in terms of investment. We do not have support from industry or pharmaceutical company or any sector which can convert that initially discovered drug into a marketable product. And I think if there is a strong collaboration between investor and the researcher and uh, pharmaceutical companies, that would solve many problems. The research infrastructure at SSE is unparalleled in the region. The results that we generate, the intellectual property that we generate, and the drugs that we make could help to reduce the instances of cancer and to find novel cures for cancer, which could be beneficial not only for academia, but for the industry, either in the form of intellectual property or as a drug that can be marketed. Of course, one contribution is in terms of drug development, but the actual contribution is the scientific contribution. We have contributed scientifically to create knowledge for understanding the virus infection and, and drug discovery. Uh, and we have published that research work in at least 15 uh, research papers in last five years in internationally high impact factor journals and we have uh, at least one patent so far. Secondly, there is a contribution in terms of capacity building, in terms of manpower development. I started this lab like six years ago and last year very first two PhD students were graduated. I trained at least 30 MS students and almost 25 BS students and most of those are currently studying in international universities, for example, MIT, Harvard and Max Planck are few of those universities where they ended up doing their higher education in those institutes. To sustain this research culture, the government should prioritize research and higher education in Pakistan so that this culture should flourish. There is a need to develop 
academia and industry close link and support research and scientific and higher education.